A big welcome to you all to October Gallery, now in its 40th year. Yay! I hope tonight you will, because of these artists, expand your present moment. The present moment has many dimensions. Here we are in an October Gallery. We have walls around us. We think this is our present moment but the present moment can be enormous. It can include the timelessness of one shoot. It can include the swirling words and beautiful brushstrokes of Chan Wei. The most wonderful labyrinth of cityscapes of Xu Zhongmin, who is with us. And it's wonderful to have you. Zhu Zhongming came here many, many years ago and had had many exhibitions here, or been part of exhibitions here, and we're so proud to see you again all the way from Beijing. It includes outer space of Govinda Saw and the precise cut-ups of Juki Kwan and this most marvelous seed, seedlings book. present moment includes this space and outer space. It includes decisions that you have with you now, and it includes commitments. It includes the past memories and the future. And if you can hold all of that in your attention, it fills your being and creates for you a larger present moment. I should like to introduce Dee Hockney, who will introduce our speaker. Thank you, Chili, and welcome to Present Moment, our first exhibition of our 40th year, which is incredible. Um, tonight we have a selection of our artists from Asia, and as, as Chili has already introduced some of them, I'm going to let Pamela do some more of the speaking. But really, we were bringing together artists that caused a pause or a stillness and created a moment, captured a moment in, in, in time and it also in our time looking at them. Um, so we have incredible new works by Juki Kwan. We, as Chili already said, we have a Hong Zhu's fragile uh, plastic bag series that create this e e ethereal beauty. We have Chan Wei with his, his works that cause us to pause, to look at them, to examine the words on the background and the thick impasto script on the front. Um, and Govinda uh, Saazad's Cloudscapes, who are just paused right before that uh, moment between air and water. Um, so we have a great selection of works tonight, and I'm really thrilled to introduce our guest speaker, Pamela Kember. Um, Pamela has a fantastic CV that we've just been talking through um, before we open the show. Um, just to give you a brief history, Pamela worked at the Ashmolean Museum and then MoMA in Oxford for about 10 years. Um, she's travelled extensively in Asia and worked and taught in Hong Kong. She was on the Asian Arts Advisory Board in Hong Kong for um, 10 year, 12 years. Um, and she's done incredible work with the Benazet Dictionary of Asian Arts in New York, a hugely important project. Um, she's also a writer, she's wrote for numerous artist journals and, and contemporary art journals um, in, and looking at art in a transnational context as well, which is highly important. Um, so she's taught here in the UK and in Hong Kong, uh, but most importantly, Pamela is now Head of Arts and Learning at Asia House, um, the largest pan-Asian organisation here in the UK. Um, at Asia House, she runs a really impressive, ambitious cultural program. They have festivals, you're probably aware of their work already, um, workshops, education outreach, exhibitions, all of which really resonate with October Gallery's aims and objectives. So we're really thrilled to have their collaboration and um, their support to October Gallery over the years. So please join me in welcoming Pamela Kember. <laughs> Well, thank you all so much. Um, just to say, um, what an incredible, hospitable gallery as well. It feels like home from Asia House to your home. 
and also for your kind hospitality uh, to Elizabeth, to Chile and Dee and everyone here. Um, I just want to say, as I'm going to say a few words this opening night, I didn't realise I was actually going to be standing in front of the words by Tian Wei. So <laughs> it's quite fitting that we have my words spoken with the words of images and text behind me, because it's quite important to think a lot about this present moment. And um, Chile and Dee and I have not even crossed words about what we would say tonight. There was already a synergy between every single word that has been spoken until I reach this platform. And it is that being in the present moment and being mindful of appreciating everyday small things. And it's really to focus on being in a space where we can appreciate things, in particular a work of art. So it's indeed the perfect moment in which to share some of my thoughts with you. And also, what connects these artists tonight is their use or alluding to the word, whether written word or the calligraphic mark making. As Tian Wei has stated before, calligraphy has always related to nature, to wind, to light, to clouds, to the moon, and ties us to being alive, to the whispers and the murmurings of things around us. And I like that idea of murmuring because it reverberates like echolocation and goes between all of the works in the gallery, I feel. I also remember um, and very, very pleased when Juki Kwan, um, whose work here to my right, created a unique sculptural work for Asia House. Um, we have an annual literature festival, which Dee mentioned, and um, we had a beautiful piece which was suspended in the stairwell of our elegant 18th century townhouse. Um, the Book of Galeo was there suspended for a few months and each time I passed I noticed different things every day from different angles. How the book appeared as if it's shedding its leaves, falling from space, yet held in a very precarious balance between its open book covers and the mass of plie, multiple folds. I really love this idea of Joki Kwan inspiring us to see beyond language, beyond difference, and yet to remain at the threshold of the book. And refreshing my memory of looking at her book and her sculpture reminded me of the Poetics of Space by the French poet Gaston Bachelard, who talks about the idea that everything ordinary in the home has an extraordinary something about it. And so it's through this encounter that we may have which can leave ourselves open, like the book, to experiencing the trace of living consciousness. I think that still remains a force in works of art, regardless of the time and place that they were created. I mean, how many of us in this room recall a painting or sculpture that we may have once saw, only to return and find something you missed or that it remained hidden until you looked again? And this was really something I happened to uh, experience when Dee mentioned I was at the Ashmolean. I was there over the holidays, and I was looking through for Bellini. Uh, I don't know if you know Giovanni Bellini's Virgin of um, Madonna and Child. And I've seen this work so many times over three years. And for the very first time, I noticed that the Christ child had only three fingers on one hand and five digits on the other. And then I thought, of course, about the Trinity. And yet I'd never seen that before. So it's like it was telling me something across time and space. And I feel about this work, certainly in this exhibition of present moment. We're immersed in this magical, almost like a clock that stopped ticking. And that's what we really need to do in this present moment, is bring together, whether we're looking at or reminding ourselves of the past, as Xu Zhong Ming's work often does, uh, look at late 18th century decorative arts or the conventions of Chinese lacquer screens. And yet to the net in our other room, we have the fencing and we have the um, multiple housing and yet uniform has been cut or broken by some of the threads in the fence. And I asked him earlier, do you think that's someone breaking in or someone escaping or trying to get out? <laughs> I think this is quite a nice analogy for us. And of course, Jackie Kwan's work is stunning. She breathes new life into remaining or old world, old worn books to create such extraordinary objects. And as Chile mentioned, the sprouting seeds. And I think of this cycle of life from the seeds to the trees, to the books. And of course, we're going back to the earth. And in Chinese culture, of course, it's about our roots and setting down uh, where we are and where we belong. 
Um, Huang Zhu's focus on singular objects or flowers, capturing, as you mentioned, Dee, the ethereal beauty, but it's also about the man-made, material, pollution, about the idea of something that can destroy our planet at the same time, become spectral forms that float in space and become beautiful beyond the destructive nature of certain materials. And I like that dynamic that is addressed in the work. And of course, I've mentioned Tianwei behind me, but I've also thought about um, a word which appeared in your press release of di dyadic, the binary poles or complementary pairs between works. And dyad can also describe the interaction between pairs of individuals, whether we're talking about lovers or friendship or family. And I see this relationship between all of the artists, between tradition, renewal, destruction, creation. Um, and certainly the ethereal between nature and the cosmos, and also because, between graceless and beauty. Govinda, um, I've looked again at the energy and dynamism, such effortless balancing, and yet at the same time, there's never nothingness. We always have something, like John Cage talks about silence, but we can't have silence. I think this wonderful relationship between oceans meeting the sky, horizons that are interstitial spaces that become this borderline between heaven and earth. And then Kenji, Kenji Yoshida. I think about the notion of transmutation. I think also about the notion of individual restrained traditions, but also the flowering, the no notion of the chrysanthemum as a national flower of Japan. Um, I, guess, I believe it's relating to the throne, um, the Empress throne, but it also relates to longevity um, and rejuvenation. And so just to end, I've been interested in the arts, as Dee kindly mentioned, of uh, the arts of Asia and the Asia diaspora for more than 30 years, since lecturing and teaching and also curating at the um, Museum of Modern Art in Oxford. And I've also been interested in this notion of transnationalism, because traveling, as we all do today, between countries, between places, between languages, belonging, homes, identities, particularly those of the Asia diaspora. We're here now feeling that we sometimes have no nostalgia for home, but we exist in a state of flux and always in a state of becoming. And just by coincidence, I thought tonight about another really important figure in the literary field who's informed my own art theory and criticism is Hélène Sixou, the French feminist writer, who wrote in her book, Mon Algérience, My Algeria, that it's only in the act of writing that she is in the present moment. She talks about weaving a magic carpet to take flight, but to be perfectly at home nowhere. And yet, if we think about nowhere, it can be now and here. And we are now and here in the present moment. And I want to say, I'm so pleased to be sharing this with you and all the artists present and absent. I wish you all a wonderful evening. Thank you.